this section culminates with a discussion of the singular value decomposition, which may just be the most important result in linear algebra. Now, to motivate why the singular value decomposition is so important, what we're going to do is look at low-rank approximation of a picture, of a matrix, but we're going to motivate it by looking at a picture. So what's the idea? Well, let's say you take a picture with your digital camera. The picture really is stored as a two-dimensional array of pixels, and pixels really are numerical values. So we can think of it as an n by n matrix. <clears throat> okay, so what if we don't want to store all of the pixels? What if we want to somehow do data compression? Well, if we call this the matrix B, then what we may want to do is approximate this with a matrix A times a matrix X, where the idea is that matrix B is the entire picture, A is a matrix with only a few columns, and X is a matrix with only a few rows. B is M by N, A is M by K, and X is K by N. All right, well, how might we do this? Well, one way for coming up with matrix A could be to say, okay, we'll pick a couple of columns in our picture, and we'll make those the columns in our matrix A. All right? And then, if we take an arbitrary column in our original picture, let's call it BJ, we're going to say, hmm, if the columns that we picked represent the picture, then maybe we can approximate this column BJ as a linear combination of the columns that we picked for A. Hmm. What does that mean? We're saying that maybe BJ is approximately some constant chi zero times a zero plus chi one times a one plus chi two times a two for the case where we pick three columns. Obviously this generalizes to picking k columns. Now <clears throat> we're going to want to do this for every column of B. So we want to bring in a subscript J to indicate that these are the coefficients with which we take linear combinations in order to approximate the jth column of B. All right? Now, we said let's take A0, A1, A2 to be the columns of A. So we can also think of this as A times xj, where xj is now the vector with entries chi0j, chi1j, chi2j, or in more general case, with k entries like that. So what we're saying is that bj is approximately a times xj. Now we would like to pick our xj to be the best set of such coefficients. What does that mean? Well, that means that we want to look at bj minus a times x. We want to say, let's look at the magnitude of the difference. Well, we can use the 2 norm for the magnitude. And then we can say, minimize that over all possible choices of x, and pick your x sub j to be the vector x that minimizes all of that. That's known as the linear least squares problem. Something that you saw in some linear algebra course at some point. It's something we'll delve into much more deeply later, if either you forgot or you didn't see. Now, <clears throat> if A has linearly independent columns, then the best such solution is given by, well, let's see, if A were square and invertible, then xj would simply be A inverse times bj, right? But A has more rows than columns in this case, so we can't do that. Now, there's something called the pseudo-inverse that takes its place. 
and the pseudo inverse is given by a transpose a inverse a transpose times bj. And you can prove that this is the best choice in the case where a has linearly independent columns. All right? And what does that mean? Well, that means that our bj is approximately a times that vector, which is given by that right there. Now, what if we do that for all of our columns in our, our picture? Then we would say, okay, B0, B1, and so forth is approximately equal to, let's see, the first column would be approximated by A, A transpose A, inverse A transpose B0. The second column would be approximated by A, times A transpose A inverse A transpose B1, and so forth. And you should recognize the fact that we can then bring this matrix out, and this is actually equal to A times A transpose A inverse A transpose times B0, B1, and so forth. This is equal to that, and therefore this is approximately equal to that. So what do we have now? We have that B is approximately equal to A times A transpose A inverse A transpose times B. We can choose this to be our matrix X. This matrix is then M by K in general. This matrix, you can check, is K by N. And what we have now is a formula for computing a rank K approximation to our picture. You can check that this is a rank K matrix. All right. Now, you can say, well, it would seem to me that there must be optimal columns in my picture that I can pick to get the best approximation. And then you might say, well, it would seem like how many columns I pick would influence how accurate of a, an approximation I get. And then you might say, well, what might happen if I don't choose my columns from the original picture, but I just allow them to be anything? Maybe I can get an even better approximation. Now, all of those kinds of questions are answered by looking at something called the singular value decomposition of a matrix. A singular value decomposition allows you to find the optimal A and X for this approximation. It allows you to quantify how many columns you really should make part of your matrix A. You know, what rank K, what the K should be in that rank K approximation. Now before we can get there, we need to revisit orthogonal vectors, orthonormal vectors, uh, something called unitary matrices, and once we have all of that apparatus, then we can introduce the singular value decomposition and the whole theory that supports it.